So we're working through some motion graphs, multiple choice questions for the A-level physics mechanics topic. There are 10 questions, so for each question, I would recommend pausing the video and having a think about the question um, and decide which response you're going to give before then um, pressing play to reveal the solution. So question one, a sphere is released and falls. Its initial acceleration reduces until it eventually begins to travel at constant terminal velocity. Which displacement time graph best represents the motion of the sphere? So the answer is D, and the reason is the first part of the graph is showing uh, that the object is accelerating, and that's what we're told in the description. So it, its initial acceleration uh, reduces until it eventually travels at a constant terminal velocity. And the second section of the graph here is a straight line. So that's the point where it has reached the constant terminal velocity. It's worth just checking the others. Um, whenever you get a straight line across on um, a displacement time graph, then that means the object has stopped. So it can't be um, A because that flatlines there and it can't be B because it flatlines here. The object doesn't stop in the description and it can't be B because that's a constant um, curve there and um, and so the velocity doesn't actually um, ever become a constant velocity. The variation with time t of the distance s moved by a body is shown below. What can be deduced from the graph about the motion of the body? Yeah, so the answer is D, the speed changes. We know that the uh, speed is the gradient of the displacement time graph, and we've got a, a, a shallowish gradient there changing to a steeper gradient, and so there's a speed change from slow to a faster speed. Um, so the answer is D, the speed changes. It can't be A, because if it accelerates continuously, you'd expect a curve smooth curve like that one. Um, it's not B because if it's starting from rest then you would expect um, a horizontal line across to start with to represent that it's initially at rest um, and it can't be C. Um, if the distance is proportional to time then you would expect just a single straight line passing through the origin. The diagram shows a velocity time graph for a car what is the distance travelled between t equals 0 and t equals 4 seconds? And so this is a case of finding the area under the graph line. And we've got a triangle shaded in pink there. And we can find the area of that. It's going to be um, 12 minus 2 for this, uh, the, the height of the triangle, uh, which is 10, um, times 4 divided by 2. So that's 20 metres for, for, for that part but then not forgetting this uh, rectangle shaded in blue and the, add the area of that to the 20. So it's two times four equals eight meters. So in total we have 28 meters. So a common error here is to uh, forget about this rectangle and to go for answer C, but obviously that, that would be wrong. The answer here is D, 28 meters. So this is question four. A car at rest in a traffic queue moves forward in a straight line and then comes to rest again. The graph shows the variation with time of its displacement. What is its speed while it is moving? So we're looking at the section of the line that goes from here to here. And we know that the flat line uh, sections, it, the object is stationary. So we're going to find the gradient of that. So it's going to be that displacement which is 70 minus 30 divided by that time there um, which is 50 because um, it's it's a 50 there and it's 100 there so 100 minus 50 is 50 seconds um, so yeah we've got 40 over 50 40 meters over 50 seconds and that gives us 0 0.8 meters per second so the answer is b a stone is thrown vertically upwards a student plots the variation with time of its velocity. What is the vertical displacement of the stone from its starting point after five seconds? So we're going to use the area under the graph method. Um, 
and we're going to consider that um, the the ball has um, firstly gone up in the air and reached a maximum point height where the velocity goes to zero and then it started to fall back down um, so we've got uh, a positive um, velocity that way which is uh, and the displacement covered in the upwards direction is the blue section here and then we've got a negative velocity as it starts to fall down so um, we're then going to subtract this area from the blue area um, because we're trying to find this um, displacement from the starting point um, so it's going to be a blue area which is that triangle which is 45 meters 30 times 3 over 2 45 meters minus the pink area the area under the line there which is 2 times 20 over 2 which is minus 20 meters um, and that gives you um, 25 meters so 45 minus 20 is 25 meters so the answer there is b question six what gives the value of a body's acceleration and we know that acceleration is the gradient of the velocity time graph so the answer here is d just checking b the area under a velocity time graph is displacement um, and the gradient of uh, a displacement time graph is velocity um, the area under a displacement time graph doesn't have any significant physical meaning question seven the diagram shows a velocity time graph what is the displacement during the last two seconds of the motion so it's going to be the area under the graph line between uh, two and four seconds for the last two seconds of the motion and so it's the area shaded in pink and um, two ways of calculating that either um, trapezium area of a tra trapezium method or you can do the uh, larger um, triangle um, so uh, this the area of this triangle um, minus the area of the smaller triangle which is that one there and yeah that gives you 12 times 4 over 2 for the larger triangle 24 meters minus the small triangle 6 times 2 over 2 which is 6 meters which then gives you um, answer to C which is 18 meters question 8 a ball is released from rest at time 0 after one second it bounces inelastically from a horizontal surface and rebounds reaching the top of its first bounce after 1.5 seconds what is the total displacement of the ball from its original position after 1.5 seconds so it's helpful to do a, a diagram of what's going on here so the ball is released from rest and it falls to the ground where it then will bounce but just that drop height we call that s1 on the graph is going to be represented by uh, we're going to find from the area under that first um, triangle um, so that's that's the first one second um, and then it's then going to bounce back up to um, a particular height and that's going to be represented by this shaded area here so we've got the height from the from where it's dropped to the ground s1 and then we've got the the height from the ground up to where it's uh, bounces up to s2 um, and then what we're trying to find is um, the displacement from the initial um, drop height so we just call that s and then we'll find s from um, s1 minus s2 so we just find the area of s1 is five meters just the area of that triangle and the area of s2 is 1.25 meters subtract those 5 minus 1.25 and we get the answer which is 3.75 meters so the graph of velocity against time for an object um, moving in a straight line is shown and so that's just this first graph shown here and then the question is what is the corresponding graph of displacement against time so we know that i'm um, just looking at the velocity time graph we know that we've got an increasing velocity 
followed by a constant velocity, followed by a decreasing velocity. So what we're looking for is uh, on the displacement time graph is um, a curve upwards to start with, which would um, show us our increasing um, velocity, velocity. We're looking for um, a line which goes straight um, diagonally up, which would show us our um, constant velocity. And then we're looking for a line which curves over like that, which shows a decreasing velocity. Um, and um, the graph which um, does that is um, graph C. It might be helpful to just break that into three sections to see that it's curving up here in the first section, straight line second section, and then curving over in the third section. This is question 10. The graph shows velocity time graphs for two vehicles, X and Y. The accelerations and distances traveled by the two vehicles can be estimated from these plots. So which statement is correct? We know that acceleration is the gradient of um, a velocity time graph. So the accelerations of X and Y are not the same at 2.5 seconds. It's referring to that point there. They've got different gradients. The initial acceleration of y is greater than x. Well, no, it's going to be the other way around. x has got the steeper gradient and so therefore has the greater acceleration. C, the distance travelled by x is greater than, than the, that travelled by y in the five second period. Um, let's consider that one. And then D, the distance travelled by x and y in the five second period is the same. And if we look at x, um, x has traveled an extra bit of distance here, represented by that area. Remember distance is found from the area under a velocity time graph. But just looking at the extra distance covered by x there, and also it's traveled uh, less distance than y by that amount and because those two areas are the same they can kind of cancel each other out and we can say that the distances traveled by x and y in the five second period are the same.